Hey guys, Chase from Entopology here. So today I'm just going to run through a couple quick examples of different types of perforation patterns you can make in Entop. To begin, I imported a uh, CAD design of a laptop and a face that I wanted to apply some perforation patterns to. Now the first step is going to be to apply some points, and each point is going to act as a location for a hole to be uh, to perforate the plate. To do this, we have a couple different ways. We can generate some organized point patterns you can see on the screen here. In this case, it's a diamond, but we can change between different types of grids, uh, maybe BCC, and we can also change the density by going in here and changing the number along each direction, such as that. The second way we have is to kind of create some random points Initially, these are going to be completely random, so you'll see what that looks like here. But we can add some relaxation iterations um, and maybe do something like this. So it's kind of pseudo random, and there's uh, more organization or structure to where the holes are placed. We can also go in and uh, replace this with some type of field. Now, what that's going to allow us to do is drive the location or the density of the holes um, based on some distance. In this case, I just I uh, spawned a little sphere over here and essentially ramped the distance between holes from um, the sphere here uh, to a more densely packed area where we want more perforations here. But it's very easy just to uh, do the rest of these operations just with some random uh, hole locations. So once we do have the hole locations, we can go ahead and very easily create uh, cutting tools, we like to call them. But essentially, they are just, um, oops, wrong button. They're just little uh, beam members that we're going to use to uh, cut from the plate. And as you just saw there, we can then um, subtract those from the plate and apply the, the hole cutting. And again, if I were to change this for to the more organized structure with a lot more holes, we would get a much more densely packed um, perforation pattern. Now, uh, these holes can also be applied on an angle, or the angle could even vary along direction or based on field, but in this case, they're just normal to the surface. Um, the next thing I'm going to show is some more sophisticated uh, perforation tools, such as uh, changing from a circular cross-section to square or pentagon uh, cross-section. And the way we're going to do that is uh, very similar. We can actually just go ahead and change the number of sides that we want to apply. And in this case, it's going to create a uh, perforation pattern. However, it's going to be completely, uh, they're all going to be pentagons. And you can see that uh, nicely ran there. So again, each place we had uh, an original beam, we now have a uh, pentagonal prism. 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 Now this is uh, one thing, and again, we can change that to six and have a hexagon or whatever you would like to do. But what we can also do is ramp not only the distribution of the holes, but we can ramp the shape of the holes or the thickness of the holes as well. Essentially what that looks like is replacing the number of sides, in this case where we put pentagon, with, let's say, um, a field. And what this is going to do is it's going to, instead of creating a pentagon everywhere, it's going to start from a uh, square, again, where we saw that initial sphere. And I'll just show, put the sphere on so you can see. Close to the sphere, our uh, cutting tools are going to be square and have four faces. But as we progress along the uh, length of the part here, you'll see they begin to transition to pentagons. This is the last row of um, squares. And then as we continue uh, further and further, you'll see that they eventually transition into hexagons uh, just on this row here. And again, we could have this um, run not only by the distance from the sphere, but it could be any type of simulation data, etc. Once we've done this, we can do a similar thing maybe to the size of the, uh, of, to the perforation pattern. And again, that's as easy as using the same field to drive the size. And in just a second here, we'll have the new cutouts. And here you can see we still have the same pattern from squares to pentagons or hexagons. However, this time the uh, radius of that cross section changes as well. 
So the last uh, little part I want to show here is our then our ability to uh, essentially cut this out, mesh it, and then we could either oops, my bad. We could uh, send this to CAD as a step file or pair solid, um, or we can actually just uh, export as a mesh, and you could import it into your uh, CAD software as a mesh, and we could replace that part of the laptop. Um, a couple more things just quickly is this isn't limited to flat surfaces so here I brought in a uh, rocket nozzle and we can easily actually replace that um, surface with a rocket nozzle face and what you'll see here is our cutting tools I'll just increase them their size our cutting tools will actually be rerun and in this case they will all be normal to the rocket nozzle surface and you can see here where the rocket nozzle now is. We have uh, the same random holes and distribution of holes, um, but in this case they're uh, to perforate the rocket nozzle. So once you do develop one of these workflows, you can reuse it for any sort of CAD faces. And then the last thing I'd like to show just really quickly here is we can, uh, we don't have to just use distance from distance of a sphere, but we can also use simulation data to drive uh, the different types of hole location or thickness and what that can result in is a perforation pattern that's closely aligned with your simulation data essentially a simulation driven design uh, that will allow more heat to escape in this case from the thermal simulation where there's hotter or more concentrations of heat so if you guys have any questions um, please feel free to reach out directly uh, or through to ntop through our website or linkedin but i hope you found this useful thanks